Welcome to 10 TV Plus. I'm Dylan Robichaud alongside Michael Behrens. And Michael, talk about a nice week out there today. More nice weather for the rest of the week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it has been a, a welcome return to spring out there this week. But while we've got the nice weather to enjoy for now, it got a little bit of action on the horizon, too. Absolutely, yeah. So we have that 10 weather impact alert for the weekend as we got some strong storms. But today, as we look behind you, Beautiful out there. Beautiful out there. Yeah, <laughs> let's hop right into it right now as we get a live look out there. Let's get a look at the headlines yet again today. Up to around 70 degrees. Lots of sunshine, but we are tracking rain and the possibility of thunderstorms heading into the day on Saturday, which we'll talk more about that coming up in just a moment. 60s up to the north today, mid 70s as we work our way a little bit further down to the south. And take a look at this. We peak at 76 heading into your Friday, dropping on down to 60 though as we head towards Sunday as a little bit more pleasant weather moves back into the region. Dry out there today. We are tracking a slight chance of a few pop up showers late in the day on Thursday. This is only about a 10 to 20% chance, but as we head towards six o'clock on Thursday, again, that risk will be a bit more exacerbated along I-70 and then things improve as we head towards Friday morning, three o'clock, nothing showing up on the radar. That's perfect because that is just in time for the lunar eclipse. And let's take a look at that right here. As you look at the timing, the best time to get out there, probably around 2.58 in the morning. That's when we have the maximum eclipse. And then as we get towards 3.30 beyond, that's when it eventually ends. Over here on the right, that's what the moon will look like. So an incredible day to be out there looking at that. Right now, I'm thinking clear skies, maybe a few clouds on down to the south. That's pretty much it. 10 weather impact alert though on Saturday as we are tracking that risk of a few thunderstorms. And then take a look at that. The temperatures come crashing down on Sunday as we get some colder air working into the region. This comes in two rounds. Round one comes in on Saturday. This is gonna be a pretty powerful line of showers, but we're not expecting any convective weather. Round two, this could actually have some convection. So we're talking that instability, that fuel for a couple of thunderstorms Saturday night heading into the day on Sunday. We have issued that 10 weather impact alert. Why? Because we're thinking wind, rain, and the possibility of small hail. Again, Saturday night heading into the pre-dawn hours of your Sunday. Not just that, take a look at this. As we look up high in the atmosphere, we have that narrow band of water vapor. What is that? That is what we call an atmospheric river. That is going to be driving in some heavy downpours heading into Saturday night going into Sunday morning. So we're talking on the order of one, one and a half, maybe two inches of rainfall here where you see that purple. That purple right there, we're talking near two inches of rain through Sunday morning. That means that we could be looking at some isolated pockets of flooding out there on the roadways also. Now the wind on Saturday morning, not too bad. Take a look at this. So it does increase west of 71 up towards Delaware, Marysville. It starts getting pretty strong. And then by one o'clock on Saturday from Besires out towards Kenton, we're looking at winds between 40 and 45 miles per hour. So very strong wind, also the potential of some localized flooding as we get that heavy rainfall through the region on Saturday. And as we head towards Saturday night, of course, things wind down and we start to see some improvements. As we get a look right now at the seven day forecast, here's your warm weather right here, middle end of the 70s. And then as we head towards next week, it gets a lot colder. Look at Monday of next week. Here comes the jet stream and look at that way down at the deep south. That cold will be with us here. We're looking at temperatures in the middle end of the 50s. Warming on up though as we head towards Tuesday back to the mid 60s. That nice weather continues as we head towards the start of next week. And we're going to be tracking a lot of sunshine heading into Monday and keep in mind, Average high for this time of the year is around 50, around 50 ish degrees. And so we will be above that through every day of next week. So definitely tracking some changes on the way here at home, though. We're going to keep this dry weather going through at least Friday. <laughs> so, I mean, really kind of a, a, a nice weather pattern out there through at least the end of the week. But we got to keep our eye on that weekend. Yeah, that? exactly. The weekend look, it looks a little bit more dicey. Yeah, certainly. And you, and you know, it's all part of spring weather heading back into central Ohio. It's that time of the year again, and it's just one of several signs that we're seeing that spring's almost here. One of those being allergy season also on its way. While pollen levels are low for now, experts are waiting <coughs> until symptoms start to take 
uh, uh, well, make things worse. Allergists recommend starting treatments early to prevent symptoms. That includes using saline or steroid nasal sprays and taking long acting antihistamines before those pollen levels rise. Better to actually prevent it and pre treat it a couple weeks before is typically all that's needed especially with the nasal steroid sprays that are either prescription or over the counter. If you do that, you're gonna be in a much better situation because otherwise you're gonna be behind the eight ball and it's gonna take a lot longer to feel better. Experts also recommend checking pollen forecast, limiting outdoor time during peak hours and keeping the windows closed to reduce exposure. And another sign that spring is coming, well, next week this time, we'll be dealing with the statewide tornado drill. That's when sirens across the state will go off. It's part of a yearly <coughs> test that's taking place at 950 in the morning. Typically, the sirens in Franklin County last for around three minutes. However, uh, communities are able to opt in or opt out of that outdoor siren test. And that drill, just part of what is Severe Weather Awareness Week in Central Ohio, will have full coverage on air and on 10 TV Plus. You can download that app on your TV and watch for free. And moving now to the environment, the Environmental Protection Agency is cutting all of its environmental justice officers. Those officers worked to protect disadvantaged communities from being disproportionately impacted by contaminants. The agency placed more than 160 environmental justice employees on paid leave earlier last month. Now those employees are being fired. <clears throat> These cuts are coming right as a new report released uh, this week highlighting air pollution around the globe. Just 17% of cities are meeting air pollution guidelines set by the World Health Organization. Researchers at IQ Air in Switzerland analyzed data from 40,000 air quality monitoring stations around the world last year and found the dirtiest air in Pakistan, India, Chad, Congo, and Bangladesh. The most polluted major U.S. city was Los Angeles. Seattle was the cleanest. Experts warn air pollution could be worse in those areas that may not have as many reporting sites. And, of course, that monitoring equipment goes a long way to help keep tabs on how the Seattle's a good spot here you have the Pacific Ocean so there's yeah. no cities to the west of there <laughs> so the nice clean air I used to live out there yeah absolutely and you know you want to keep that air clean and of course the EPA works to do that and we keep an eye on all of that climate news but this week reductions in sea ice protests about NOAA and ignoring air quality abroad topics are covered in today's CBS News Climate Watch We're keeping an eye on the climate. Here's what you need to know. The EU's Climate Change Service says that global sea ice cover was at a record low in February, with Antarctic sea ice 26 percent below average. This comes as a new study finds that melting Antarctic ice sheets are slowing the world's strongest ocean current. The Antarctic circumpolar current is more than four times stronger than the Gulf Stream and is part of the world's ocean conveyor belt that moves water around the globe and facilitates the exchange of heat, carbon dioxide, chemicals, and biology between ocean basins. Protests were held across the country last week against the mass firing of employees at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Sources tell CBS News about 880 employees were let go, including some meteorologists at the National Weather Service. In a statement, the American Meteorological Society said that the consequences of the cuts will be wide-ranging and include increased vulnerability to hazardous weather. The website for Elon Musk's Doge team is also including some no buildings on its list of government leases that will be canceled. And the Trump administration is reportedly ending a program that monitored air quality at U.S. embassies and consulates around the world. The program, which began with the U.S. embassy in Beijing in 2008, has been used for academic research and credited with helping reduce pollution in host countries. That's your Climate Watch. For the latest on the climate and environmental news, go to cbsnews.com and follow us on Instagram at CBS News Planet. I'm Jesse Mitchell in New York. 
And turning eyes now from the climate to fire danger, we're seeing an increased risk for some of that here today across central Ohio. We're not looking at any kind of red flag warnings or burn bans in place, but this afternoon does present the risk for fires to quickly get out of hand. The National Weather Service placing several counties in our southeastern region under a special weather statement for that elevated fire risk. It's a combination of low humidity and relatively breezy winds as we head into the afternoon. Good news is drought monitor conditions. We're not seeing excessively uh, dry areas across southeastern Ohio. That's an improvement from where we were as we went into the winter uh, last year. That has improved, so that should help to tamp things down. But again, this more of a short term risk as we head through today. We'll take a look at the wind gust forecast as we head into this afternoon. Watch some of those southeastern counties. We pick up here about four o'clock between 15, 20 miles per hour. It's not a lot, but it's enough that we could get some of those uh, areas out there of drier fuels to spread quickly. This continues into the evening before things start to calm down a little bit more as we head into tonight. Looking at those dew points as we head into the afternoon, we're down in the 20s and 30s, but as temperatures rise this afternoon, even with those 30 degree dew points, we will see drier air develop. Of course, relative humidity, a factor of temperature and dew point, so we will see relatively dry conditions in those southern counties. Use extra caution if you're going to be out there later today. And speaking of fire, this is just one of many risks we've seen across the country uh, with conditions like today in Ohio. CBS News's Carter Evans, he went to visit a lab that researches all things to do with fire to find out more about what scientists are researching around this topic. Tucked beneath Missoula, Montana's snow-capped mountains, there's a laboratory unlike any other in the country where scientists are starting fires to better understand how they burn and how to manage them. Look at this uh, fire tornado phenomena. We watched mechanical engineer Jason Forthoffer replicate a fire NATO. You get these super strong winds in there, just all naturally driven by the fire. Are these indicative of more extreme fire behavior? Absolutely. As that increases, I think we should expect to see more of these fire tornadoes. It's like the flaming front of a fire coming through. Exactly. That's the intent. Fire scientist and lab leader Mark Finney showed us this burn table to demonstrate how circulating air can impact a hillside fire. It's drawing it up the slope. It's drawing it up the slope. And so this is one of the reasons why it's so dangerous to be upslope of a spreading fire. The U.S. Forest Service built the Fire Sciences Lab in 1960, inspired by a forest fire that killed 13 firefighters. Today, about 80 employees are carrying on that mission of wildfire research, and they keep coming back to one controlling principle. We're part of the problem. We're definitely part of the problem. Finney believes we still don't implement some of the basics, like clearing dry vegetation with more prescribed burns, including near urban areas, and letting some smaller wildland fires burn to eliminate fuels that could feed larger fires. The harder we fight fire, the harder we try to remove fire, the more the fuels build up in a given location. We've actually created conditions that make those fires worse. This lab allows the uncontrollable to be controlled and studied. Finney took us to a silo where his team assembled dry logs and lit them on fire to simulate wind-fueled flames on the forest floor. It's creating its own weather in that it's sucking air in. It is sucking air in. And what they're learning here has never been more important, following a slew of massive wildfires, including ones that recently destroyed thousands of homes in Los Angeles. California's governor's office called the fires unprecedented. Is it really that unprecedented? I don't think so. It's the same fire events over and over again, and yet decades go by and, and those, those lessons and those, those impacts are often forgotten. He hopes what they learn from studying the flames can change the way we approach wildfires. How do you convince a community that lighting a fire near their homes is a good idea? It, the question is, what risks do you want? To experience the very low risk of having problems with prescribed burning? Or do you want to basically roll the dice and just wait till circumstances overwhelm uh, emergency response? We've proven that we can't eliminate fire. The only choices we really have are when to have it and what kind to have. And that will require a change in perspective, looking at fire as an ally, not an enemy. For Eye in America, I'm Carter Evans in Missoula, Montana. Finally today, let's look at some new video into us here at 10 TV. Maybe almost spring, but there's still some winter danger out there. And a kayaker fishing on a river in Massachusetts saw that firsthand 
They saved two black labs that had fallen through the icy water. Zach Lalonde was fishing for carp for his YouTube channel in the Sunbury River near Sudbury Concord Line. He noticed two dogs were chasing some geese when they ran out onto the river. Both dogs fell into the water after running over a patch of thin ice. The owner was ready to jump in after them, but he told them to wait and paddled over to the dogs, pulling one onto the kayak after several attempts and then helping the other get onto the ice before kayaking back to shore, taking the dogs back to their owner. Oh my goodness. It was a happy ending. Concord mass. That yeah, it's been warm up there lately, so that ice is melting fast. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that we really have any ice left here in central Ohio, as warm as we've been, but it just highlights the danger. Once we get into that transitional season, you, you can't trust that ice. Right, yeah. It only takes a couple 40 degree days for that ice to become unsafe. Yeah, absolutely. And again, God, both those dogs made it out there. I think we're about to see this doggy pulled up on There we go. The, either the ice Come or the on, boat. Pal. Come on. There he goes. There yeah, we look go. at him go. He's there. We there we go. That's what you like to see. And a spring has sprung across the region. Some of the European brown bears are back out and playing around. They finished up their three month hibernation for the winter at the, I'm going to probably mess this up, Whip Snotty? Whipsnod? Looks good to me. Zoo. It's somewhere over in England. Uh, and recently, <laughs> Sue said they're running around playing, eating, swimming in their pool after taking their winter slumber. The zoo also added that the bears will now eat meat, vegetables, and foods to build up muscle mass and prepare, well, for the next hibernation. Like, just like me, when you get one sleep done, you're ready for the next sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but look at that, that's a good sign of spring there. You get the bears back out. Hopefully it doesn't get really cold again and fool them and they're like, oh, oh go back made that mistake, came out too soon, gotta go back. <laughs> hey, once there's food out there, hey, you don't wanna go back in the cave. Exactly. You, gotta, you gotta get that food. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, that does it for us here on 10TV+. Plus. Chief Meteorologist Jerry Martz will have your forecast tonight at 6.